February 14. Moses inspects the work. And so at last the tabernacle was finished. The Israelites had done everything just as the Lord had commanded Moses. And they brought the entire tabernacle to Moses, the sacred tent with all its furnishings, clasps, frames, crossbars, posts, and bases, the tent coverings of tanned ramskins and fine goatskin leather, the inner curtain to shield the ark, the Ark of the Covenant and its carrying poles, the Ark's cover, the place of atonement, the table and all its utensils, the bread of the presence, the pure gold lampstand with its symmetrical lamp cups, all its accessories, and the olive oil for lighting, the gold altar, the anointing oil and fragrant incense, the curtain for the entrance of the sacred tent, the bronze altar, the bronze grating and its carrying poles and utensils, the wash basin, with its stand, the curtains for the walls of the courtyard, the posts and their bases, the curtain for the entrance to the courtyard, the ropes and tent pegs, all the furnishings to be used in worship at the tabernacle, the beautifully stitched garments for the priests to wear while ministering in the holy place, the sacred garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments for his sons to wear as they minister as priests. So the people of Israel followed all of the Lord's instructions to Moses. Then Moses inspected all their work. When he found it had been done just as the Lord had commanded him, he blessed them. The Tabernacle Completed Then the Lord said to Moses, Set up the tabernacle on the first day of the new year. Place the Ark of the Covenant inside, and install the inner curtain to enclose the Ark within the most holy place. Then bring in the table and arrange the utensils on it, and bring in the lampstand and set up the lamps. Place the gold incense altar in front of the Ark of the Covenant, then hang the curtain at the entrance of the tabernacle. Place the altar of burnt offering in front of the tabernacle entrance. Set the wash basin between the tabernacle and the altar and fill it with water. Then set up the courtyard around the outside of the tent and hang the curtain for the courtyard entrance. Take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all its furnishings to consecrate them and make them holy. Anoint the altar of burnt offering and its utensils to consecrate them. Then the altar will become absolutely holy. Next, anoint the wash basin and its stand to consecrate them. Present Aaron and his sons at the entrance of the tabernacle and wash them with water. Dress Aaron with the sacred garments and anoint him, consecrating him to serve me as a priest. Then present his sons and dress them in their tunics. Anoint them as you did their father, so they may also serve me as priests. With their anointing, Aaron's descendants are set apart for the priesthood forever, from generation to generation. Moses proceeded to do everything just as the Lord had commanded him. So the tabernacle was set up on the first day of the first month of the second year. Moses erected the tabernacle by setting down its bases, inserting the frames, attaching the crossbars, and setting up the posts. Then he spread the coverings over the tabernacle framework and put on the protective layers, just as the Lord had commanded him. He took the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant and placed them inside the ark. Then he attached the carrying poles to the ark, and he set the ark's cover, the place of atonement, on top of it. Then he brought the ark of the covenant into the tabernacle and hung the inner curtain to shield it from view, just as the Lord had commanded him. Next, Moses placed the table in the tabernacle along the north side of the holy place, just outside the inner curtain, and he arranged the bread of the presence on the table before the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded him. He set the lampstand in the tabernacle across from the table on the south side of the holy place. Then he lit the lamps in the Lord's presence, just as the Lord had commanded him. He also placed the gold incense altar in the tabernacle, in the holy place, in front of the inner curtain. On it, he burned the fragrant incense just as the Lord had commanded him. He hung the curtain at the entrance of the tabernacle, and he placed the altar of burnt offering near the tabernacle entrance. On it, he offered a burnt offering and a grain offering, just as the Lord had commanded him. Next, Moses placed the wash basin between the tabernacle and the altar. He filled it with water so the priests could wash themselves. Moses and Aaron and Aaron's sons used water from it to wash their hands and feet. Whenever they approached the altar and entered the tabernacle, they washed themselves, just as the Lord had commanded Moses.
Then he hung the curtains forming the courtyard around the tabernacle and the altar, and he set up the curtain at the entrance of the courtyard. So at last Moses finished the work. The Lord's glory fills the tabernacle. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could no longer enter the tabernacle because the cloud had settled down over it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Now, whenever the cloud lifted from the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out on their journey, following it. But if the cloud did not rise, they remained where they were until it lifted. The cloud of the Lord hovered over the tabernacle during the day, and at night fire glowed inside the cloud, so the whole family of Israel could see it. This continued throughout all their journeys. On the day the tabernacle was set up, the cloud covered it. But from evening until morning, the cloud over the tabernacle looked like a pillar of fire. This was the regular pattern. At night, the cloud that covered the tabernacle had the appearance of fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from over the sacred tent, the people of Israel would break camp and follow it. And wherever the cloud settled, the people of Israel would set up camp. In this way, they traveled and camped at the Lord's command wherever he told them to go. Then they remained in their camp as long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle. If the cloud remained over the tabernacle for a long time, the Israelites stayed and performed their duty to the Lord. Sometimes the cloud would stay over the tabernacle for only a few days, so the people would stay for only a few days, as the Lord commanded. Then, at the Lord's command, they would break camp and move on. Sometimes the cloud stayed only overnight and lifted the next morning. But day or night, when the cloud lifted, the people broke camp and moved on. Whether the cloud stayed above the tabernacle for two days, a month, or a year, the people of Israel stayed in camp and did not move on. But as soon as it lifted, they broke camp and moved on. So they camped or traveled at the Lord's command, and they did whatever the Lord told them through Moses.